Welcome to the This Is Parenting podcast, a show devoted to sharing the roller coaster journey of parenthood from moms and dads all over the world. I'm your host, Andrea Rhodes. Information and show notes about today's episode can be found at thisisparentingpodcast.com. Let's get started. Hello, listeners. On this episode of In My Experience, I'm going to be sharing my journey with potty training. And it has been a journey and one I'm still on, so this episode will be a fun one. Like most milestones with my two kids, I've had vastly different experiences with potty training one versus the other. Maybe it's a boy-girl issue, maybe it's a personality difference, maybe it's my level of patience, or maybe it's a combo of all of that. But to say I've seen a few things while potty training would be an understatement. My oldest, my son, was, dare I say, a breeze to potty train. After endless Pinterest scrolling and article reading on how to potty train a kid, being overwhelmed with all those choices, I decided to try a three-day naked boot camp type of thing. What resonated with me with that solution is it brought the margin of errors down, at least seemingly so, and the focus for me had to solely be with him. Not on activities we had going on or any other distraction, it was just us focused on potty time. I also felt that this would give me a good indication on his willingness to give this a go and whether he was even ready for it. I feel like I went into the three-day session with eyes wide open. I mean, I read a few of those clickbait articles with headlines like, My kid was fully potty trained in three days, this is how. And I smelled the bullshit from a mile away. But a lot of what they did say did make it seem like this was a decent way to kick things off. It kind of reminded me of potty training a dog, which I had some experience in, so that made it a little bit easier to relate to. And in the end, I will say it is a whole lot like potty training a dog, so that actually checks out. Okay, so before the three-day boot camp, which I really hate that it's called that, it shouldn't be miserable for the child, so I'm not sure if that's in reference to how miserable it can be for a parent. I don't know, but I hate it. Anyway, I armed myself with a couple of boxes of Capri Suns, lots of treats for when he was successful, set up the potty in the dining room where the linoleum floor was there for easy cleanup, and we got started. My son was sans pants and diaper just running around in a shirt, and he was loving it. Pretty much just loving naked toddler life. He had access to a ton of typically forbidden items, all containing lots of sugar, so he was amped. And about every 15 minutes, I would put him on the tiny little toilet and would ask him to try and go pee. No luck. Maybe an hour or so in, we had our first success and our first sugary reward. We had a couple of close calls here and there, but by and large, it was a very successful day one. Day two was more of the same. I tried to see how much I could push it with gaps in between potty sessions because obviously going every 15 minutes was exhausting. He had more successes and a few more misses, but again, nothing too bad. Way better than I expected, really. So day three, I attempted to put underwear on him. And then the accidents happened. I think they must have felt like diapers to him, so he would just let loose. But if there's one thing my son hates, it's being messy. He doesn't like to get very dirty, never has. So him soiling himself was not something he was keen on at all, which actually made all this infinitely easier. He figured out how to hold it, and that was pretty much it. Now, he obviously wasn't perfect. He would wait much too long and would start dancing around and grabbing himself, and a small accident would happen, but by and large, he was good to go if you made sure to take him to the bathroom every hour or so. I wasn't brave enough to try overnight yet, but eventually he woke up dry for so many consecutive nights that I figured it must be time. And one pro tip I will share with you is to layer your kid's bed with waterproof sheets. I'll link the ones we use in the show notes, they are lifesavers. So what I do is I have a waterproof fitted sheet on the mattress, then a regular sheet, then another waterproof sheet, and one final regular sheet on top of that. Now why this double layer is key is because without fail, at 2 a.m. your child will piss the bed and wake up absolutely beside themselves and you will stumble to their room all disoriented trying to evaluate the situation and figure out what the hell is going on. 
the doubling up makes cleaning up so fast because you just rip off the first two layers, throw them in the laundry, and boom, you're good to go. The bed is all ready to go with a nice dry sheet and a second waterproof layer underneath. So change your kid, plop them back in bed, and away you get back to your slumber as quickly as you can. No need to scramble for sheets and blankets or even turn on the lights, so that's a lifesaver. I totally recommend it. Okay, so my son wet his bed one time. That's it. Like I said, he's a freak of nature who hates being dirty so much that he figured this shit out super fast. And all in all, it was a pretty easy transition. Uh, we did make one mistake, though. We thought we could take a weekend trip in the middle of all of this potty training. Yeah, that ended with my husband getting pissed on at lunch while at the St. Louis Zoo. It was not a good look for anybody. I was carrying around a potty seat with me all day long. Don't do that. I couldn't even enjoy the trip because I constantly had my eyes locked in on my son's crotch the whole time, just waiting for the first sign of him needing to go. But overall, potty training a boy went pretty well. Once they get it, you can have them stand and pee, which adds a whole other level of fun for them, so that makes it even easier. Who doesn't like target practice? I mean, I don't because I have to clean up when they miss, but, you know... That's just boys, they're gross, and that's a whole nother podcast episode. So moving on to kid number two. Let's just say I learned a lot about my daughter throughout this process and how different she is from her brother. I was obviously really pleased with the results of my oldest that I took the same approach with her, and I'll admit I was confident, I was cocky, I was ready to be rid of the diapers. Suffice it to say that parenting karma is a real bitch because I did not have the same results. In fact, we are two years into this mess and we still don't have it figured out. Some context here is needed so you can fully grasp the situation at hand. We had just sold our house in preparation of building a new one, but the timing was piss poor and we couldn't start building for nine months. So we moved in with my in-laws while we waited. While we were there, we decided it was a good time to potty train the youngest. She was showing signs of interest and readiness, so we thought, what the hell? I was overchanging diapers and, more importantly, buying them, so I was certainly willing to try. And things got off to a good start. She had more accidents off right off the bat, but she was generally getting the art of peeing in the potty. Even going number two was going pretty well. But then I figured out really fast that my daughter is not externally motivated. She had her fill of sugar and thought, fuck it, I'm out. Like, that was fun for a few days, but now I'm back to doing what I normally do, which is apparently wet herself. So getting her over the hump was much more difficult. She just didn't give a shit if she was wet. So she would sit in her pee, not tell anyone, and be a-okay with it. So we had to watch her like a hawk, and we kept a timer on her, which was helpful. And she was really starting to get the hang of it, and I was already telling people she was pretty much potty trained when we moved. She was better out in public than she even was at home, so all positive signs. But remember parenting karma? Yeah, she makes her appearance right around here. When we moved into our new house, all of that hard work went to hell. I don't know if the move had anything to do with it or if it was just poor timing, but as we moved, I noticed more and more accidents. And frankly, I wasn't that surprised. We were super busy, very distracted, and she was feeling her way to her new normal. I mean, she had spent half of her short life in two other homes already, so this was three moves in two years for her. But we got settled in and things just didn't improve. She was having accidents all the time, and I also took note that she was being a real bear at times. Like, I know age two can be tough, but yikes. She was just unpleasant to be around 24-7. Just grumpy. She never smiled. She never enjoyed things. That is, until she pooped. And then she would sweeten up. It took me a while to finally put two and two together and realized that her constipation was probably causing her to be miserable, which obviously makes sense. Who likes to be constipated? It just took me a while to put it together. So I took her to the doctor just in case it was something medical because we had never had this issue before and the doc said it wasn't and told me to give her a dose of Miralax once a day to get things moving. And your pediatrician also said that being constipated can also lead to accidents because the poop is pushing up on the bladder. Did not know that was even a thing, but certainly explained why even taking her to the bathroom every half hour wasn't enough to curb the accident. So yeah, that was a ton to take in, but at least I had answers. I was so tired of all the yelling and frustration and tears and accidents and the stress that I decided just to stop potty training altogether. I wanted to focus on getting my sweet girl back, and that meant getting her regular, so back in pull-ups we went. 
and we were all so much happier. I actually wrote a whole post about stopping potty training and why I don't regret it for a second. I'll link it in the show notes. So we went along like this for another six or seven months. It was quite a while and I just enjoyed knowing everyone was back to their sweet selves, their unstressed, unconstipated selves. And But at some point, I realized that she will be going to pre-K soon, so we should probably try it all again. And this time, I had more confidence, armed with more knowledge, and hopefully a lot more patience. And my daughter was that much older, so hopefully she's ready to get this done. And as I record this podcast episode today, my daughter is almost four, and we are not there yet. I'm not even sure I would say we are close. Sometimes I feel like we are, and then she will have an accident, and I just throw my hands up. I don't get as anxious about it as I did before. I mostly take a she will get there when she gets there attitude, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't top of mind for me at times. The countdown to preschool is on. In six months, she is expected to show up to school fully potty trained. Which, now that I've been through this twice, is a super unrealistic expectation. And I get it. The teachers don't want to spend their time wiping kids' asses, truly. I understand that. They don't get paid enough as it is. My husband is a teacher, so I can attest to that. But I also know that a four or five year old cannot properly wipe themselves because my six year old still needs assistance every now and then. And I've seen my almost four year old try, and she can't even reach her butt crack. She just wipes her back. So, yeah, I honestly don't know if she will be ready in the fall or not. And it's really tough. It's very much two steps forward, one seemingly huge step back. We just can't quite get a firm grasp on it. And I know we aren't alone. There are plenty of kids who aren't fully potty trained at four or five or even six. And it turns out that constipation in kids this young is also very common. And yes, we were checking things like her diet to be sure she was getting the right amount of fats and fiber. She is. So for now, we carry on in hopes that her gut figures out how to do what it's supposed to do. I just have such empathy for parents going through something like this and for the kids My daughter doesn't enjoy having accidents any more than I enjoy cleaning up the mess, and it's also difficult to see her friends or kids much younger than her get this all figured out. I'm still carrying around spare clothes and underwear just in case. I'm still taking her to the bathroom seemingly every five minutes just to avoid those awkward moments. And with all things, I know we will get there. I know we will, but for now, please send me all the positive vibes and clean underwear my way. Many thanks. And again, don't forget to visit the show notes for this episode where I'm linking some great blog posts with resources for potty training. For those of you who might just be starting out or who might be thinking your kid is ready, I'm including a blog post about some signs that your kid actually is ready to potty train. And then I'm also including that post about why I quit potty training and why I would do it all again in a second. So go check those show notes out. Plus, I'm linking to the waterproof mattress sheet that I mentioned before. It is a lifesaver, so go check that out too. Thanks for listening.